Welcome back to Second and Short. It is Wednesday, July 12th, 2023. We had some uh, scheduling issues, so Luke will be joining me today, and I believe Brock will be on on Friday. So, Luke, welcome. Going to the beach on Thursday. Look at you. What's the scheduling issue? Yes. <laughs> this guy thinks he can take a vacation. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> but at least I can do Tuesday. I'm so excited for this one. Yeah, this is going to be a fun one. We've got the All-Star break going on right now. Unfortunately, we did have to record a little bit early, so we won't be getting any kind of All-Star game recap. But uh, we'll be doing... um something fun where we just have to guess what's going to happen in the all-star game and congratulate a, a division or, you know, a league on winning because everybody's going to hear this on Wednesday. So we have to be certain of what we say about this game. <laughs> uh, but we did have the home run derby last night. It was fantastic. And then uh, starting up a, a little bit of a series, it's going to take eight weeks and we're going to be doing a preview of every single NFL division. And we're starting off this week with the AFC West and then we've got the Gold Cup quarterfinal recap and semifinal preview. And then some transfer news. I'm going to be announcing the final five teams I've narrowed it down to to choosing my Premier League fandom. Because if you haven't realized yet, I know it feels like soccer season just ended. Premier League season starts exactly a month from right now when we're recording. What? Yes, Manchester City against, I believe, Burnley to start off the season. Wow. On August 11th. Vincent and Company making the return. Yes, sir. J.J. Watt. J.J. Watt and Vincent Company. The defensive <laughs> duo we never knew. <laughs> exactly. And then um, taking a little break from top three, bottom three, and bringing back some stake your claim. It, it's hot take season, everybody. Yep. Summer. Yep. It's been hot in Georgia. We've been dealing with it. so <laughs> It is to hot bring out in the my hot room. Takes. It is so hot in my room. I'm sweating, and I had to turn down the fan so it didn't pick up on the microphone. So you guys are welcome. You don't have to hear my fan, but you might hear me, like, panting in my room. So uh, we'll see how this goes because I'm already sweating. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, let's go ahead and get into this MLB recap. Of course, we had some games over the weekend, and I'm going to go ahead and present it. I love doing this now after I did it last week. Winners and losers. Oh, yeah. I got quite a list. So we'll start off with the winner, and it seems like he might be here every week. Ellie De La Cruz. Oh, man. He just keeps making history, and I got to keep putting him in the winners. He stole second, third, and home, I'm sure you know, in just two pitches. <laughs> and he becomes the only MLB player in the last 50 years to steal all three bases with the same batter at the plate. He becomes the first Reds player to steal second, third, and home in the same inning since Greasy Neal. On August 15th, 1919. And in that same season that Greasy Neal and the Reds uh, did all that, they also made it to the World Series and played in the 1919 World Series against the White Sox, led by Shoeless Joe Jackson. And one of the, it, it, like, that was one of the most notorious game fixing scandals in sports history. So, a wow. lot of history here. And even deeper on Greasy Neal. He became a Hall of Fame NFL coach. What? Yeah, he took the Eagles to a 1948 and 1949 title in the NFL. Dang, back to back. <laughs> yeah, so shout out Greasy Neal, a legend. Yeah. Absolute no legend. Even, no one even knows you. Yeah. Now we do. That's awesome. Yeah, but also... Ellie has become the only player in MLB history with 40 hits and 15 stolen bases in their first 30 games. And it actually only took him 29 to do it. <laughs> He's a freak. I have he one is. more stat to add to this. Please do. So, um, The last player to steal three bases in an inning. So this isn't even in one plate appearance like Ellie did. This is just in an inning. It was like almost three years ago. On August 25th, uh, John Birdie did it against the Mets, but I forget what team he played for. Um, Probably the Marlins. I feel like that's where he was. It was Miami. That, okay. that sounds familiar. But, yeah, he was the last player to do it. Solid. Solid. Uh-huh. All right. Let's get to Easy. our first loser. This one's uh, a big old loser. A lot of losers here, actually. Five of them, to be precise. It's any division leader that isn't the Braves. <laughs> As of the All-Star break, five. Five of the divisions in baseball. Where the first um, 
There's five divisions of baseball where the first place team has only a two game lead or smaller, including ties. Oh, wow. It's the most divisions with that small of a lead over the second place team at the All Star break since the MLB went to six divisions in 1994. So, obviously, I'll, I'll, you know, go through these. So, we start the American League East. Tampa Bay Rays with only a two game lead over the Baltimore Orioles. Rays. Off to a horrible July. I think they really needed this All Star break because this July was bad. They're three and seven in their last ten, really struggling. And the Orioles have crept up quickly. They're they've won five straight. They are are truly surging. And then you look at the Central, the shit show of the MLB. Uh, nobody's above five hundred. Yep, nobody. The Cleveland Guardians lead that division at forty five and forty five. Twins half a game behind them at 45 and 46. And then the West, the Rangers at 52 and 39, who are three and seven in their last 10, have the Astros hot on their heels. Two games back, they're six and four in their last 10. And we hop over to the National League, National League Central, the Reds, 50 and 41. They've got a one game lead over the Milwaukee Brewers at the moment, uh, but both of these teams pretty hot. Reds seven and three in their last ten. Brewers six and four. And then in the West, we have a two team tie. Um technically the Dodgers lead it on win percentage, but Dodgers and Diamondbacks tied at the top. This one is interesting. I didn't think we'd already be at this point where the Dodgers would catch up, but they have. Uh and then the East, uh, of course, the Braves. Sixteen twenty nine. Well- I mean, even in the West, the Giants are only two and a half games back. Yeah, yeah, two and a half games back. Like, there's th- really all three of these teams are in contention for this division. Yeah, uh, really entertaining over there. And then you got the, you know, sad Padres. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they suck. <laughs> oh, boy. But, I yeah, the, Ra- uh, the Braves have just been so impressive. And it's not even like the Marlins are bad. It's no. just the Braves have been hot, you know, all year long, really. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if anybody realizes this. The Marlins are the second best team in the National League. Yeah. And it's the just Braves that the Braves are so, lead. Yeah, the Braves are so good. And it's because they I mean, went on the road. Like Miami and Atlanta have very similar home records. Atlanta thirty and fifteen, the Marlins thirty and eighteen. On the road, the Braves are thirty and fourteen, the Marlins twenty three and twenty one. Yeah. Dang, that's terrible. Compared to their home record. Yeah. Yeah. So even like the Phillies would be a good team in some of these divisions. Like they're not oh, even yeah. that bad. 48 and 41 puts you in, yeah, third place in the cent- Like it, it essentially puts you in third or fourth place in most divisions, though. Yeah. In, in the National true. League. Obviously, just about anybody would be winning in the uh, AL Central. Yeah. <laughs> but Man. yeah, everybody's a loser but the Braves. <laughs> and then uh, um, let's get this next winner, David Ross, because he continues to be one of the best managers whenever he gets hot mic'd, talking to an ump. On uh, Sunday, he approached the home plate umpire to argue a ball and strike call and said, you got one goddamn game before you get a break, and you're that fucking bad already. <laughs> <laughs> and this was caught on the oh, hot man. mic on TV. That, that's pretty good. Yeah, hilarious shit. Like, David Ross, I will say, like him and Aaron Boone have got, like, as soon as they step out of that dugout, it's going to be a show. Oh, my God. Do you remember earlier in the year, Aaron Boone with that sidearm, the piece of gum? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Aaron Boone is probably the, the top, but David Ross has always got a good comment. I love it. Yeah, it reminds me of the Bobby Cox days. Bobby Cox was the GOAT. Of getting ejected. <laughs> Most ejections, uh, I believe, in MLB history for a manager. Really? Yeah. Wow. I wouldn't... Huh. He's the GOAT. That's the only thing Snit didn't take from him. I will say that. <laughs> Snit doesn't so, get ejected often. I like it. Um, Are you... Uh, Were you done? Oh, yeah. You have got, winners, I right? Got, I got plenty. <laughs> okay. Uh, My next loser, uh, the Yankees and Red Sox. Oh god! For the first time in AL East history, those two teams will head into the All Star break as the bottom two of the division. First time in history. In AL East history. 
Wow. Yeah. So, hmm. um, any bandwagons out there? This is a tough <laughs> one for you. I guess you guys are rooting for the Dodgers right now, though. Yeah. Fair enough. You better not come to the Braves. Don't try. Don't try. <laughs> I know who. I know who's real. If you it's if you were tweeting out. if you're tweeting about how bad you were that Johnny Gomes struck out four times in a game, then you can root for us. <laughs> I'm I'm gonna gatekeep the Braves this season. That's That's my goal. That's my goal as a loyal, lifetime Braves fan is to gatekeep the fuck out of them. I like that. Yeah. Name five players on the 2012 Braves. (laughs) You can't. Exactly. (laughs) You can't. (laughs) Exactly. Fucking. I'm sure like Nick Swisher was on that team. Um, (laughs) My next winner. Yeah. The Naylor family. Obviously, Josh and Bo. Of the Cleveland Guardians, we saw a couple weeks ago, Bo got his first hit for the Guardians. Josh has been up, had some great playoffs. But their younger brother, Miles Naylor, just got drafted 39th overall by the Athletics. Oh, not the Athletics, though. Yeah, that's a tough one. That honestly might make him a loser. But for now, (laughs) the family, the Naylor family, especially their parents, are the winners. Yeah, big dub for the parents there. Yeah, they bred some workhorses. Sure did. And then uh, my next loser, a catcher's name to Austin in the MLB. This okay. is a, a weirdly specific one, but there's four catchers in the MLB that have gotten playing time this season. Um, and it's Austin Hedges, Austin Barnes, Austin Nola, and Austin wins. Austin Hedges in 59 games. This is all war and OPS plus that I'm going to go by. He's got negative one. Or uh, R War twenty seven OPS plus. Obviously, the plus means that league average is a hundred. Oh shit! Yeah, Austin Barnes in thirty three games, a negative one point four WAR and a negative eleven OPS plus. You don't Whoa. see a lot of negatives when it comes to the plus statistics. I'll tell you that. Wow. Austin Nola, 51 games, a negative 0.4 WAR and a 30 OPS plus. And finally, Austin wins with a t- 25 games, a negative 0.2 war, and 43 OPS+. Plus. You got a guy in negative, though? Yeah. So what, what does that mean? If you have a negative OPS? A, a negative OPS plus means that you are so much worse than league average that, like, theoretically, the worst in the league should be zero. And you're worse wow. than that. Dang. <laughs> he has how many games? He's played 33 games this season. That, uh, that's still pretty bad. That's, that's like a good month of baseball. That's like how Dude, many games... Blown cock. That's like how many games a platooning catcher could be around at this point in the season. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you want to know something funny? I just looked up on Google. I, I just put in the search bar negative OPS plus, and the first thing that came up was Gary Sanchez. That doesn't surprise me <laughs> at all. Oh man! Even Austin Romine's on here. Damn, two another years. Austin. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but from 2013. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's interesting. Oh, but man. let's get to my next winner. I'm very excited about this. Sports okay. Reference and Immaculate Grid are winners this week. Sports okay. Reference, obviously the creators of Baseball Reference, Football Reference, all that shit. Basketball Reference. They have purchased Immaculate Grid. This is fantastic news for a guy like me who hit my last month just about has, you know, at least 10 minutes a day have gone to the Immaculate Grid every day. Every, uh, literally, d- without failure, me and, and Colin, our common guest host, do the Immaculate Grid every single day. And yeah. it is so much fun. It, it is so fun to like spark these memories in your mind of like, oh, who's a Met and a Royal in their career? Oh, Jeff Francoeur. The fact that I get to think about these things on a daily basis makes me so happy. <laughs> and the the this joint effort now with Sports Reference and Immaculate Grid, I think, is going to be fantastic. There's already like a hundred thousand people that play Immaculate Grid. 
So, really? Yeah. Like, like I'll, I'm gonna. I haven't done it yet today. I'm gonna go ahead and pull it up. See how many games have been played. Hey, I'm doing it right now. I just got a 10 percent on my first try. <laughs> Yankees Astros. Carlos Beltran. Damn, was his time with the Yankees just Let's brutal? See. Though there have been 88,000 games played today. Damn. Yeah. Huh. Pretty. What? Pretty impressive, and uh, yeah, it is now run by Baseball Reference. I'm, I'm very excited uh, about this, uh, but I'll, I'll get to this grid later. Uh, and my final loser, the Minnesota Twins social media team. Uh, on July 1st, the twi- well, also just their team in general, but on July 1st, the Twins posted on Instagram, is that why they're called the O's after holding the Orioles scoreless? Since then, they've gone 0-4 against the Orioles while being outscored 26-6. to Wow. Yeah, talk about cursing yourself. <laughs> right? <laughs> that is tough. Whoever approved that needs to be fired. <laughs> Or you could just get new players because your team sucks. You could do that. It's hard, though. Yeah, get a new offense. (laughs) Entirely. Oh, man. All right, I got a couple of news things. And then... um, Oh, wait. Um, Hang on. Before you do that, I'm going to add myself to your winners because I just got a 2% on on this Immaculate Grid. My my best is a 0.1. Wow, I got uh my my two percent was uh two hundred hit uh two hundred plus hit season. Don't, don't give Yankees. me the answer. Don't. Okay, you haven't played it yet. Yeah, I haven't played it yet, so don't Ooh, give me okay. any. Any my answers. bad. But I'm I, gotta, ve- I, I yelled at Colin the other day because he tried to show me his before I had played it. <laughs> I'm passionate. Stabbed at him. I'm a passionate gritter, grid, grid player. <laughs> Sorry, I just had to throw that out there, but I need to stop doing this because uh, this is very entertaining. It is so much fun. <laughs> Okay. So much fun. But I'm going to continue. Luke Weaver uh, just continues to pitch poorly. We talked about him a couple weeks ago and how in six straight starts they had won, but he pitched like shit. They keep doing it. They've now won eight straight when he starts games. And in that span, he's now at an 8.66 ERA. What? Yeah, but they just keep winning. And opposing hitters have an OPS over a thousand against him in these eight games, <laughs> but Damn. they keep they keep winning. Ow! It, it is mind blowing that he's it's continuing very to do this. Interesting stat. Yeah. Is it even possible? I, I don't. I, I really can't wrap my head around it. In his um, last seven games, he's given up forty six hits and yeah. thirty one earned runs. Yeah, and they just keep winning. Ow. It's insane. Uh, But let's talk about the next thing. The number one prospect in last year's number one overall pick, Jackson Holiday, is getting the move up to double A already. 19 years old. Getting the move up to double A, the Bowie Bay Sox and the Orioles organization. And at at this rate, we could see him in the majors next season. Like before, before he even turns 21, we could see him in the majors. Wow. The get wrong him. team, though. Someone get him. Someone get him out of this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Damn Luke, it, bro. <laughs> you've got to be scared of what is going on in your division because he's not a Yankee. I don't want him in the AL East. <laughs> That's fair. That's fair. So, when are you guys going to trade for Adley Rutschman? <laughs> <laughs> when are we going to pay Ellie De La Cruz five hundred million dollars? That's a good idea. Eleven years. Yeah. I like this, that. Uh, Jackson Holiday guy set a national record for hits in a season for an amateur player with 89, surpassing the previous record of 88, uh, which was set by JT uh, Rilamuto. Rilamuto? Yeah. yeah, Rilamuto. Rilamuto, yeah. And if you didn't know, Jackson Holiday's father is Matt Holiday. Wow. Yep. Good lineage there. It is, for sure. Uh, my next one is just a story that I heard. Uh, Alex Cobb told reporters this story, and I it cracked me up. He said that his four-year-old daughter is old enough to understand that he plays baseball for a living, but she's not old enough to understand how rare it is for somebody's dad to play baseball for a living. And he said she'll meet other kids at the park, and they'll say that they're going to a Giants game or something, and she'll ask what position their dad plays. 
That's so cute. <laughs> yeah, I thought that's so funny. So let, let's throw this in the winners. Almost. We'll throw this in the winners. Childhood of Innocence, a winner this weekend. Uh, and then my last Dude, thing. Oh, no, that, go ahead. No, 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 I just wanted to say that that's like, that's like kind of a flex. Like imagine being the yeah. dad just standing there while like the kids are talking. Yeah. And they're like, no, no, my dad actually paid like, you know, 65 bucks to sit in the nosebleeds at the yeah. Giants game. Not what position do I play? <laughs> yeah. And then like Alex Cobb's daughter's like, yeah, my dad's on a multi million dollar contract. <laughs> I love that. We go for free. Yeah. <laughs> All right. My last awesome. thing uh, David Bednar was asked, I think it was at All Star Media Day, what he would say to Shohei Otani to sell him on playing in Pittsburgh. It's just going to be a, a real hard thing to do, but I think Bednar gave a great response. He said, uh, I'd tell him we put fries on everything. That's it. That's all. That's what's going to bring in a $500 million greatest, possibly the greatest player of all time superstar in Shohei Otani is French fries on a burger. I mean, it sounds pretty phenomenal. I've had it in Pittsburgh. It's great. I didn't know you ever went to Pittsburgh. Yeah, I've been to PNC Park for a game. That's cool. Yeah, I was very young, but Did you get to see the bridge? Probably. Isn't uh isn't PNC Park like known for like the skyline view? Yeah, it's got a great skyline view because of the the Allegheny. Yeah. Yeah, it's beautiful. Awesome. Uh but Luke, let's get into your stuff. Yeah. Um, all right. So the Yankees hired Sean Casey as their new hitting coach. Um, and a cool fact about this is in 1999, Casey and Aaron Boone were roommates uh, while with the Reds. Oh, each interesting. Other. Yeah. Kind of interesting there. Did um, they ever did anything uh, weird in that room? Oh, yeah. Boone's a weird guy. <laughs> He's into that angry stuff, if you know what I mean. <laughs> um, Carlos I Rodon. I don't know what you mean. <laughs> I don't want we'll leave to. it at that. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. <laughs> Carlos Rodon finally pitched versus the Cubs. Uh, we were actually together while this happened, and uh, you got to break the news to me. It was pretty shit, but not as shit as it could have been. Could have been uh, worse. He uh, pitched uh, into the fifth inning and saw one batter, uh, two earned runs. Uh, one of them was a home run. Uh, gave up four hits, two walks, and two strikeouts, and the Yankees lost that game. So, not too great, but I mean, hey, it, it's good to see. It's good to see the guy that's getting all the money finally, you know, playing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and I'm pretty sure it was the Cubs' first win at Yankee Stadium ever. Yeah, I think that's the stat I saw. Wow. So every other time, and like with two of the oldest teams in baseball, it's been a sweep. Yeah. That's insane. Yeah, kind of crazy. I did not know that. Um, Mr. Cortez uh, just got moved to the 60-day IL. I got a lot of Yankees news uh, here. He last pitched May 30th, uh, and he can be activated on August 4th. Uh, he's got a rotator cuff inflammation, and uh, yeah, I just thought I'd throw that out there. Um. I kind of, with all the Carlos Rodon stuff, I forgot Nestor Cortez was even hurt. Yeah. Yeah, I, I just like I just thought he was pitching bad, and I wasn't hearing about him. Oh, well, he was before his injury. <laughs> okay, cool. <laughs> it's Yeah, it's just how the Yankees have been this year. Yeah. Um, let me see. Was that my last thing? Yeah. No, that was okay. actually my last news. That's all I had, yeah. plus the Ellie De La Cruz stuff, but we yeah. already talked about him. Oh, so. also Aaron Judge, another Yankees news. Aaron Judge will not be at the All-Star game. Oh, yeah. Yeah. He decided to stay. I thought we talked stay. about that. Uh, we, we knew he wasn't playing. We didn't know he wasn't going. Oh, okay. So he's not yeah. even there. No. Wow. Piece of shit. <laughs> he's in the lab. Yeah, whatever. He's on a couch. <laughs> uh, extremely long couch. <laughs> I was about to say a huge-ass couch. <laughs> <laughs> in like a That's penthouse funny. apartment. Um, but <laughs> New York City, where you can touch the walls, yeah, standing in the middle of the room. <laughs> yeah. All right, let's talk about the home run derby last night. It was phenomenal. It was more than I could have asked for. Dude, not a lot of power on paper. It had a lot of entertaining guys on paper, yeah. but like, I felt like it lacked in the power department. But dude, what an entertaining home run derby! Yeah, seriously, it was so great. so much fun to watch. Um, yeah. 
first round, you get Randy Orozarena versus Adolis Garcia, two guys that are like literally best friends. Um, and Randy defeats the godfather of his child, twenty four to seventeen, uh, in that first round. Yeah, Randy, I I knew Randy had it in him to be very good in this, and for some reason, nobody thought he could. So, him, him and Vlad were my picks. Like prior to the start, they were my uh, here picks. It goes. Yep, I, I'm just saying. <laughs> I'm just saying. You were with me. I, yeah, I told you. I did agree. <laughs> I told you it was Vlad and Randy. I even called that one on my on my Instagram story. I called it Randy was going to win. He didn't. Yeah. But still. Made it to the final. Fantastic yeah. showing. I uh, like I said on my Instagram story as well. I watched it and I thought he won. I, I was sitting there. I literally had my Instagram pulled up posting the graphic on the second and short page. And I look up and I'm literally about to click post on Randy Rosarena winning. <laughs> And wow. then his last one didn't go over. I was like, "Fuck." <laughs> he, um, yeah, he ended up losing by two, right? Uh, I think he lost by one. I could be wrong. It was oh yeah, 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 yeah. He lost by two, but it looked like a couple of those last ones went over, and they were moving so fast. I was like, "Oh, he definitely got it." Just didn't. Yeah. At the uh, start of the round, I thought Randy was gonna win it because what he yeah. had thirty seconds to hit like what was it like four or five? Yeah, something like that. Um, yeah, I thought he had it. But, but let, let's continue with round one. Luis Robert, yeah. honestly, Louis, look, okay, Luis looked fantastic in this first round. 28 home runs, but Adley went first, and I think Adley did a great job with 27. Like, considering how kind of rough of a start it was, his dad was not the most consistent pitcher. And um, also switching to right-handed in his bonus time and hitting like 8 of 10, like that was – Fantastic, but um, yeah, yeah, Luis just overpowered, just looked yeah. insane in that first round. I remember, um, you and I on the last podcast, like, I, I don't think you and I really had Adley doing much, it was just kind of cool to see like a young guy there, but he ended up making some noise, especially like with what you said, going uh, going on the right side there, that was crazy. Yeah, it how many was people insane. have ever done that before in a home run derby? I, I don't, don't know. Think I've ever heard I, of that. I actually saw um, on Reddit earlier today some guy asked that question. Nobody had answered him yet. But oh, wow. um, let's get to this next match of Vlad Guerrero Jr. versus Mookie Betts. Uh, this one was laughable. <laughs> yeah, Mookie tried. He did. I'll, I'll give him that. But Vlad goes <laughs> first and hits twenty six home runs. <laughs> <laughs> and Mookie is just like, it's over right then. And like 26 <laughs> really isn't that much in the no. first round. But yeah, look, shout out Mookie for trying. We oh, we yeah. all knew he wasn't going to, he knew he wasn't going to win. He said it in his press conference. Yeah. So yeah, it, it's fair enough that, that he didn't advance. But uh, the final matchup, just fucking phenomenal. Julio Rodriguez goes first and just absolutely dropped his dick on the table. 41 home runs is absurd. Yep. And Pete had no shot. Coming out of the gate, Pete had no shot. And, like, he tried, but a horrible showing, honestly, by (laughs) Pete. To his standards, that was really bad. 21 home runs? You know the hill you have to climb is 41. Yep. You only get 21. I, it, <laughs> I just think it's so funny that you and I can both put our dicks in the mouths of the New York Mets because I <laughs> Julio Rodriguez, he could have hit 41 against anybody else. Yeah. And he hit him against Pete Alonso. It was perfect. And not only that, at the home ballpark too. Yeah. Oh my god! Perfect. I, after that, I wanted Julio to win the whole thing. Yeah, I did. I, I mean, too. that was just so cool. Yeah, it, it was a great scene. And then yes. round two kicks off. Randy defeats Luis Robert, thirty-five to twenty-two. Just a an all-out beating by Randy. Look, definitely his most efficient round. There was he just like got off to a hot start and just kept piling them on, and then. Um, yeah, Luis just, it seemed like his pitching got a little more inconsistent and 
he got a little gas from that first round and just kind of started popping the ball up more, hitting a lot more low line drives. Yeah, I don't, I don't even think I saw anything from that round. Yeah, I think it was while we were driving home. <laughs> yeah, probably. And then, uh, <laughs> and then Vlad defeats Julio Rodriguez in the semifinal 21-20. And, and Julio just did not come out very strong. Um, probably tired from hitting 41 home runs. I actually have a really interesting question to ask you about yeah. this. I, I really hated, and it probably was just because of the round prior, but I hated to see how Julio Rodriguez went out because I thought he was going to keep it a lot closer against Vladdy. I, I almost think that there should be like a format change to the, to the home run derby. And I heard, um, I heard something on the radio this morning of uh, guys talking about it. I can't even remember what I was listening to. But I think it's set up to where guys can like, guys who go first and don't really have like a number to go to, I feel like are always kind of at a disadvantage in the sense where they just have to keep going pretty much as long as they can go, I feel like. I don't know if it's While a the other disadvantage. Guy, it may not be a disadvantage, but the other guy can like, all he has to do is beat that guy, and then his round's over, and he can rest. The first guy kind of, I feel like, has to try a lot harder and go a lot longer. And um, I kind of yeah. feel like it's a little bit unfair in a way, and I really hated because I, I think that's kind of why Julio didn't come out as strong. And you even talked about it when we were watching it together. Like, he's got to be fucking tired yeah. after hitting 41. Yeah. So, I don't know. What do you think? I I think that... This is a great setup because, well, first of all, the guy that goes first gets the opportunity to set the pace, which is huge. You have no goal in mind if you go first. You don't have to worry about, oh, like I have to hit this many. You just have to hit a bunch of home runs. You have no stress on you. And then the second guy comes up and he's like, shit, I have to get to... 41. Like, you saw the difference between when Julio hit 41 and Pete had to climb that hill and, like, when, you know, like, Vlad had 26 and Mookie was like, I'm not getting that. Like, Pete was trying very hard and couldn't get there. Yeah. Mookie was, it didn't seem like Mookie was trying that hard and got nowhere <laughs> close. But, like, yeah. Adley and Luis, like, their matchup in the first round, it was very obvious that Luis Robert early was like, oh, like, I have to catch up. Whereas yeah. Adley was able to, like, have a couple of bad pitches thrown to him and just take, like, have a couple of takes and then, like, get it going. So I think going first, you're at more of an advantage than going second. But I, you got to look how it affects them the rest of the time, though, is uh, what maybe? I'm saying. But I, I don't know. I, I feel like it'd be easier to have a goal to go to. I, I know that, like... The guy who goes first is they they don't even have a number they just got to hit home runs right but like at the yeah. same time if you don't have a number then when should you stop true so like I, I don't know like i i feel like if they shortened the time of the home run derby and shit i i would even like to see more players added maybe like one or two more players from each uh each conference since it's shorter yeah cool. maybe I don't know. I, I, I like how it's set up right now, personally. Yeah. Or I, I should have said league, I guess, not conference. Yeah. They're not conference. It's all good. But, yeah, that <laughs> that championship round was fantastic. Yeah, sorry. We went off on a whole tangent yes. there. I just thought that would be an interesting question to ask you. Um, Yeah. I, like I mean, like we said, it was everything we could have asked for. You know, yeah. it, it was so entertaining to see. Yeah, throughout it was. the entire competition. It was fantastic. Um. Adolis is uh, Adolis Garcia's pitcher probably could use a contract in the MLB though. Yeah, fantastic. I forgot breaking to balls. mention that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, man, he was out there. I mean, throwing a wiffle ball. <laughs> yeah, I'm surprised that Pete didn't kill his pitcher. Oh yeah, big time. Especially <laughs> when you had such a great pitcher in prior years, and you have this guy step in different pitcher than you've seen in your other home run derbies. And he just was not was not there, man. Could not get the zone. Speak, yeah. Speaking of people, or um, people being in danger at the home run derby. Oh did man! You, uh, 
Did oh, you see the man. kid that got smacked by yeah. Vladdy? Yeah. A hundred and like almost 16 miles an hour to the yeah. face. And I read Tough this one, one comment on the reel that I watched and the dude was like, you know, it's kind of crazy that they even have kids out yes. there like facing some of the most powerful hitters on planet Earth. Yes. It's kind of ridiculous. Uh, like, okay. I, I'm just about always going to laugh by somebody hitting a ball at somebody and it hitting them in the face. The majority of <laughs> yeah. the time, I'm going to laugh. I'm going to laugh way harder when you're a kid or like, you know, a teenager, whatever, that signs up. To get like a hundred and ten mile per hour balls hit at you. Would, like, you, would you want to do that with your baseball background? Would you no. not want to be out there? No, fuck that. <laughs> I'd like to be <laughs> in like the ring. stands in the outfield. Yeah, but no, <laughs> fuck that. That's target <laughs> practice, dude. <laughs> oh man, that's funny. But that kid got rocked. Oh yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, he got fucking obliterated. Also, I before before we move on to the All-Star game, um I meant to bring this up in the the MLB recap. This has nothing to do with the MLB, but I don't know if you saw this video of the dad at like a baseball game like freaking out about the balls and strikes. And he's like up in the stands and like he gets up to like walk down, maybe to leave, maybe to yell at the umpire, I couldn't tell. But he's like walking down the steps and just breaks both of his knees. Oh God! It is the funniest video I've ever seen. <laughs> I love watching videos where just it, it's just this hit crowd versus the umpire. <laughs> yeah, like the but, the, the gr like gr gruesome, simultaneous. Like you see oh his knees just pop out of place walking down the so steps. He just folded completely. Yeah. Folded. Oh yeah! Wow! Hilarious! Absolutely hilarious! Wow. No, I did not see that video, though, but, I mean, it sounds like he may have deserved it. Oh, yeah, it was, like, the best instant karma. <laughs> like, you're it. yelling at an umpire. Like, nobody else, but none of the other people in attendance were, like, freaking out but him. And he, <laughs> you see him, like, grab his, like, cooler in his chair, start, like, yeah. walking over, starts walking on the steps, and he's walking pretty quickly. Uh -huh. And you see, like, his foot, either, like, it looks like he, like, missed a step, and then he tries to catch with his other leg, and both knees just fucking pop. Oh, God. Crazy. Crazy. Uh, but let's talk about the All-Star game. <laughs> so yeah, that, let's do I had to talk about it. It's hilarious. That's um, funny. Let's start off. So, obviously, by the time anybody else is hearing this, the All-Star game has concluded. There will be an MVP. There will be a winner. Um, so... Let's just fire off some things that I think are going to happen. So, um, I think the NL will the NL scored five runs in the first two innings. Okay, that's my bold um, prediction. I mean, I it think, totally happened. <laughs> I think even minus Mike Trout and Aaron Judge, which is a real bummer that they're not going to be there. I really hate that. Um. I think it'll be one of the more flashier all-star games as far as like defensive plays. Agreed. And stuff. I think it'll be very, very entertaining in that regard. Yeah. I think it'll be great. Um, <clears throat> my next, my final score, um, just for the clip, congratulations to the national league for winning <laughs> seven to four. I was seven literally to, about yeah. to say something similar. <laughs> yeah. Congratulations to the National League. Seven to four. You broke the streak. It's fantastic. Good job. <laughs> well, you took mine, but I was gonna say the American <laughs> League. <laughs> Congrats to the American League for winning, you know, the hundred and eleventh time in a row. Yeah. And then uh, congrats to Nolan Arenado on winning MVP of the All Star game. Uh, th those two or three hits that you had, the one home run and that one double, fantastic. <laughs> I like how you're doing this. Yeah. It it's going to sound real good tomorrow morning when, when everybody's listening to this. <laughs> oh, man. I don't even know. Like, I mean, how long are they going to let the pitchers go? They only typically get like a, a couple of innings. Oh, man. It's hard um, for a pitcher to win. Garrett Cole, uh, congratulations for okay. getting six strikeouts. Nice. Nice. Yep. Way to go, Garrett. Job. Garrett. Only if you win. If you didn't, whatever. Yeah. 
Um, all right. Well, yeah. Congrats to the people, the team. Grayson, cut this out. Put in National League or American League, um, based on whoever wins. If I make this into a TikTok clip, that's a note for myself later, and I'm keeping it in the episode. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so if you're listening to the podcast, you're gonna hear this extremely raw cut of us guessing what happened in the All Star game. If you're listening to this clip on TikTok or Instagram, you have no idea that we recorded this at 3.19 p.m. on Tuesday. You should probably <laughs> listen to this podcast. You should. If you're listening to this on TikTok, you should probably be listening to this podcast. But that's going to wrap BTS. it up. <laughs> yeah, that's behind the scenes right there. Um, All right, that's going to wrap it up for the MLB. Let's talk some football, man. I'm excited. So excited! Yeah, can I uh, can I drop some news at you real fast? I just yeah, saw this. Fuck it. Alvin Kamara felony charge dropped, bringing back the the crime segment. <laughs> Rats! Way to go, Alvin. Yes. So no more felony charges for Alvin Kamara. Yeah, way to go, man. Uh, so I just got distracted. I'm watching the the red carpet show for the All Star game. Pete Alonso showed up on the screen. His girlfriend's hot. Her wife, whatever she is. <laughs> All right. Uh, AFC West. Season preview. Let's start off with the standings. Luke, how do you think the standings are going to look? End of the season for the AFC West. Oh, <clears throat> I think uh, it, it's going to be so tough. I, this one has uh, this division just has so much talent. Um, obviously, I think the Chiefs will win it. I, I think the Chargers can surprise some people. Um, and I think the I think the Broncos are going to be even worse than they were last year, so I, I'm putting them last. Okay. And, I, and I guess Raiders third, but I just feel yeah. like that's kind of basic. I I think you could make a case that Oakland maybe gets past LA and can mm-hmm. finish second, but I really doubt it. Yeah, I I don't think so. I think Oakland's going to be pretty bad, or Las Vegas. Sorry, you said oh, Oakland. Yeah, it sorry. threw me off. I did. Vegas, um, my bad. Yeah, my standings. I've got the Raiders in last, the Broncos in third, and then I, I, I'm so high on the Chargers that I put them in first over the Chiefs, probably by like okay. one game. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> it, it, it could literally be like a tie break between the two would put the Chargers over them. I really do think that they're going to be very good. So, um, Yeah, we'll see. <laughs> we will. We'll see when I'm right. I- Okay. <laughs> we'll see you when I'm I, I do um I have a very exciting player out of the Chargers when we get to that part though. Okay. Um well let's get to the dark horse to win the division. I think the Broncos are the obvious dark horse because we have no idea what could happen this year. Because like they have the talent, undoubtedly. But with last year, everything is in question with this team. Yeah, which is why I think they'll I think they'll be even worse. Um it's 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 a shame because I mean their their defense is playoff caliber I think and their offense has you know playoff caliber players but they just um man they sucked offensively horrible yeah um and they had a lot of low scoring games too um from the defensive side so it, it was truly brutal uh, on the offensive side of the football for the Broncos and honestly I think there's a possibility it could be even worse this year we'll see. I don't know. Yeah. So, so your dark horse to win the division, who would that be? Uh, the Chargers. Okay. Yep. Fair enough. It's the only dark horse you can pick. <laughs> Jersey be the Chiefs. <laughs> oh, mine's the Broncos. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, um, that's what you just said. Yeah. Yeah. Let's go MVP candidates from this division. I think obviously Patrick Mahomes is an MVP candidate. Yeah. Duh. Um. Do you just want me to run through some of mine? Yeah. Or. Yeah. Number one on my list, uh, Travis Kelsey. Um, I, I think it's it, it's very much time, uh, and I, I think he's that good. MVP early. though, yes, yeah. He, he could have he could have a better season than most wide receivers. I think. Yeah, he can. Uh, it's just like it's a matter of like will will he be able to have a better season than a quarterback? Because like his yes. entire position relies on a quarterback and will the it's not even that you know like objectively will he have or i guess subjectively will he have a better season it's will the voters 
be able to actually understand how much better his season was than like a quarterback that throws for however many yards? Oh, probably not. I mean, I, I just didn't want to say Patrick Mahomes. And I think Travis Kelsey is the type of wide receiver – or not a uh, wide receiver, tight end – that can give you 1,500 yards and like 15 touchdowns. Yeah, for sure. Um, and, and I think that's – for a wide receiver, that's M- MVP caliber. For a tight yeah. end, it should be even more MVP caliber. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Um, with um, how high I am on the Chargers, I had to put Herbert here because <laughs> – I, I do think he's phenomenal. And, yeah. like, what? He had the second most passing yards in the league last year behind Mahomes. Like, he's a like v- very good quarterback and doesn't throw a ton of picks, you know, passes for a lot of touchdowns, very, like, smart in the pocket, can move. Like, he's a, he's the whole package. You just haven't really seen it yet. Yeah, I, I was just about to say is uh, he – I feel like um, this coming season, he needs to take a big jump for me. Because I, I'm, I'm honestly a little bit sick of the hype around him. I, well, I really is it am. is it hype or is it real? Because he's actually been a good quarterback. It's not. It's not real. They're they're they cannot succeed, and they they can't win a playoff game. But they have all this talent, and now on the defensive side too, you can't even make the argument. It's only offensive. And I think it really comes down to him. I, I feel like Justin Herbert should be way better really? than what like, he actually is. But how? Yeah. <laughs> That's the thing. Like, how many other quarterbacks does he need to be better than for them to win a playoff game? I don't know. He just, I don't think he has the win gene. I don't know. I think, I think that's maybe what I it comes down to. Like, I last season, well. he had... Almost 5,000 yards. Like he was essentially a game short of 5,000 yards, 4,700 yards. He had 25 touchdowns, 10 interceptions, a 93 passer rating. Only 25 um, touchdowns. Yes. I, ben okay, Roethlisberger, I when everybody was clowning him, throws way more touchdowns than that. <laughs> Fair. And I, I'm just saying, like, that's. But he then again, you do have to deserves. give you do have to give him the fact that Keenan Allen and Mike Williams just kept going down. Oh, of course. So yeah. that definitely stunts that. But I don't know. I, I just I feel like he's already put out a body of work that is very good. Like twenty twenty one when he had healthy receivers, thirty eight touchdowns, over five thousand yards. Yeah, I, I mean that's a that's a good season. Yeah, in his rookie year, he had 31 touchdowns, 10 interceptions, 4,300 yards, and he sits above a 65 completion percentage. He's a 66.9 career completion percentage. That's a Yeah, that's a really good rookie season, but he, I, I think the hype does not fit what he is. I, I don't think anybody's yeah. calling him like a top five quarterback, but I think he's one of the best in the league. Like, obviously, right now, he's not better than Mahomes, Allen, Burrow, Hurts, uh, you know, Lamar. He's, he's not better, he's better than, than Kirk Lamar. Cousins. Uh, he's not better than Kirk Cousins. I don't know about that. I, I <laughs> Dude, really don't know about that. <laughs> I think Kirk's better than uh, Herbert. Uh, I don't know. I think this is just a, a battle between me and you both being high on a team. <laughs> that I mean, yeah, we, we have been debating for a while, but like it – um. I, he just needs to he needs to do more, I think, for me to for me to give him his uh his real flowers, I guess. But but you're gonna give Kirk Cousins flowers. Oh yeah. Big time. Interesting. Yep. Kirk Cousins, twenty third best QBR in the league last year. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh man. Um, um one I more, more guys on my yeah, list. I got one more guy for MVP as well. Um I have a couple. I, I don't know. I think that Mahomes and Herbert and even Kelsey, I, I actually liked what you had to say about that, are kind of it because I'm done believing in Russell Wilson, of course. Oh, yeah. um, and I think like maybe Austin Eckler just because he's so dynamic, but the the voters Eckler hate running backs. Yep, they do. Um, so I don't know. It, it's so hard now to say that anybody outside of a quarterback has a chance because it's just always a quarterback. Oh, yeah, no, of course. Uh, but some of the other guys that made my list, as you said, Eckler, I mean, 
dude, I would say, had a little bit of an off year uh, rushing the football, but he still, like, caught – he still rushed for, I think, like, barely a K or maybe, like, somewhere 900. He received for, like, 900 yards. Yeah. If he has a good rushing year and a receiving year like last year, I mean, shit. If you can put up 1,100 rushing yards and let's just say like 1,000 receiving yards as a running back, I'd put you I'd put you in MVP discussion, you know, depending on yeah. how many uh, touchdowns you had as well. But so Eckler was a guy. Um, I think Josh Jacobs could even be a guy. He's on a contract year, I believe. Uh, yeah, um, right now, who knows if he's even going to play. Yeah, that's true. But I think a hungry Josh Jacobs on a team that's probably going to have to run through him a little bit more. I think, you know, depending on how the offensive line is, of course, as well, I think he could even be an MVP shout. And then um, I even threw Max Crosby on this list, dude. I think we haven't seen a sack total from him yet. I I think he could seriously be up there and put like TJ Watt numbers. Yeah. He's he's the kind of guy to like rival Strahan's record, just like TJ. Yeah. And, and I would even, I would call that an MVP season. So yeah. Yeah. No, I, I'm big on, I, I hate how the MVP is just a quarterback, but at the same time, I understand why it's just a quarterback. That's why I always, you know, throw so many guys in here. So yeah. I, I just want to see, like, have anybody, like, the last time a player outside of quarterback one was 2012, Adrian Peterson. Before that was back to back. Two thousand six, Ladanian won it, and two thousand five, Sean Alexander won it. Oh wow! And then a bunch of quarterbacks, and then two thousand, Marshall Falk. It's never been. It hasn't been a defensive player since nineteen eighty six when Lawrence Taylor won it. Yeah, only two defensive players ever. Uh, the other one, Alan Page, in nineteen seventy one. A lot of it's a lot. It's mainly quarterbacks, and then a bunch of running backs, like back in the day as well. Yeah, I wonder how many like good, ridiculous like defensive player seasons there are. Like even in like the '80s and '90s that they just you know picked a quarterback instead. Yeah, well, like Lawrence Taylor in that season where he won MVP, like it was a great year. Twenty and a half sacks. Um, I don't know. They don't have too many statistics because it was so long ago. Yeah, but like no. Obviously, no interceptions. He was more of an outside linebacker kind of pass rusher. But yeah. I don't know. Like, that's not even the record. <laughs> uh, yeah, I know. <laughs> it's not. It might have been the record at the time, though. So that, I bet it was. that could have been the case. Uh, yeah. But regardless, quarterbacks dominate this, especially recently, like yep. the last 11 years <laughs> or 10 <laughs> years. So. It's pretty tough to say it's not going to be a quarterback. Yeah, and I, I think, you know, probably Patrick Mahomes would just be the easiest one yeah, to say. for sure. So, uh, yeah. Let's get to Defensive Player of the Year candidates. Yeah, I have a couple here, too. Max um, Crosby, I'll, I'll kick it obviously. Off. Yeah. Oh, you, you'll kick it off. Max Crosby, yeah, he made my MVP and my Defensive Player of the Year list. Yeah. So um, definitely like him. I put Chandler Jones on here. I think he could still give the NFL one more crazy season. Uh, maybe. Yeah. I don't know. I, I think he's a little bit past it, especially with them bringing in uh, Tyree Wilson. Like, it's a little bit harder to say that Chandler Jones is going to be like now, let me, the guy. Maybe I, uh, maybe I shouldn't have said Chandler Jones. How many, how many sacks did he have last season? Um, I oh, I'm just looking remember. it up now. Let's see. He only had four uh, and a half. Yeah, I, I thought he had I thought he had a much better total. Yeah, I think he had that many in that oh, like season opener for the Cardinals in twenty one. Yeah, in twenty nineteen he finished uh, with nineteen with Arizona. So yeah, never mind. I'll I'll take uh I'll take Aaron Jones yeah. off. Or not Aaron Aaron Jones, uh, Chandler Jones, sorry. Yeah. But yep. Go ahead. Um let you got see. let's see. Pat Sertan. I think I have he's got a shot. He's really good. <laughs> He is um, a guy who probably hasn't really broken out just yet either. Yeah. Um, you mind if I go? I've got like seven guys. <laughs> yeah, I have a couple more too. Okay, you go ahead with one. Um, Derwin James. Yep. 
Yep. Uh, put him on there. He, I think he was, was he hurt a lot of last year or he just was. did he kind of have a, yeah, I knew it was either something, but uh, yeah, who knows what like a really, really good solid year of Derwin James could look like. Yeah. Uh, same for Justin Simmons at free safety. I think Justin Simmons is very, very good. He was very good last year. Six interceptions, uh, 69 total tackles. He was a great safety last year, but He's got to be. He's got to take another step to be better than you know the other free safeties in the league. Yeah, no, I, I like that. He didn't make my list, but that that's another good shout though. Um, Joey Bosa. Interesting. Uh, you know I'm a Joey Bosa hater, so. Yeah, I I know you don't like him, but I mean he's he's still a good football player. Yeah, he's just a little bitch. Um, he's a little, very big bitch. Chris Jones, of course. Oh yeah, Kansas City. Yep. Oh, he he honestly might be like top two yeah. in this division for it. Seriously, yeah. I think it's him and Max Crosby when it comes to this yeah. division are the guys. Um, J.C. Jackson as well coming back healthy. That'll be big. Yeah. Um, anybody that's like a JC. surprise. Um. Yeah. I. Are you think are are you doing talking about surprise players or no 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 for the, for defensive player of the year oh, okay. from this this uh, conference or division? Um, maybe maybe Nick Bolton. I mean, he gets a mm. lot of tackles in in Kansas City. Um, I, I mean, like probably that. not. Maybe Carlaftis. Yeah. I would like to see you know what he looks like more more grown and more seasoned. Because, I yeah. mean, he finished with six sacks last year. It's not bad at all, especially when you got Chris Jones on your team. Yeah. So, I, I don't know. There's a couple guys, I think. Definitely. I My my favorite one uh, as, like, a surprise pick would be Asante Samuel Jr. Oh, yeah. Um, I think, like, he's more of, like, a most improved kind of guy than, yeah. like, a defensive player of the year. But I want to mention him because I really do think he could take a huge step, especially with J.C. Jackson coming back healthy. Like allowing J.C. Jackson to take over, like the more difficult receivers, kind of give Asante a little bit of a break, because he's a young player. I think this is going to be his third season. Like, he is <laughs> he like has a chance to really take a big step here? And I think this is the time to do it. I don't really know if we should be calling him Asante Samuel Jr. anymore. I think um, we should switch it to like Trevor Lawrence Senior. That fucking playoff game last year. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's more fitting. <laughs> <laughs> that was that was good. Um, any other guys for defensive player of the year? Nah, that was it. All right, let's talk best rookies in this division, offense or defense. I've really only got three. I have two. Okay, cool. <laughs> you can go ahead and start it. Uh, Michael Mayer, oh. uh, the Notre Dame tight end. I re I'm very very excited for him. And I mean, in Vegas, that position just opened up. There's no more Waller, and I'm super excited for this guy to basically be probably day one. You know, I didn't number one. So, yeah, I really didn't think about him because I think this the was Raiders the guy who I thought. Bad. Yeah, this was the guy who I thought that you and I were on the same page about when we were talking earlier. Yeah, I, I don't know. Like, I really like Michael Mayer for sure. I just don't think that offense is going to be good enough. We'll see. Yeah, I, we'll I see. don't think it will be either. But I think he'll. I think he'll look good though. He'll yeah. look good. I think he blocks a little bit too much for them to to give him a shout. But uh, my guy Quentin Johnson, I love his yep. the the capabilities that he will have in this offense. Just being a giant wide receiver, strong, high point catch, like very good. Very, very good option um, at wide receiver yeah, for think, the Chargers. Uh, and I think to bounce off of that is they he went to the best team in the division for him. I, and yes. Of course, I'm skipping over the Chiefs only because, like, they have Kadarius Tony just lost Juju, and who, like, Victor Valdez-Scantling maybe is the other guy? Marquez Valdez-Scantling. Marquez, yeah. Marquez, thank you. Um, but Quentin Johnson not only has Justin Herbert to grow with, but uh, you know guys like Gerald Everett, Keenan Allen, uh, Mike Williams, guys who are already seasoned that are going to be yeah. there. And he just, you know, it's one of those situations like with uh, Jordan Addison is Quentin Johnston doesn't have to show out even. There's no pressure for him on this yeah. team. 
he only just needs to absorb information and do what he's always done, which is play well. Agreed. That's it. So I, I really like where he landed, and I like how you and I both had him on our list because uh, yeah. he's going to be great. So that was your two guys? Yep. Okay, I also have Tyree Wilson just just because I know he's a beast. And So, I, okay, go ahead, go ahead, sorry. sorry. I, I just think this Raiders defense can be so good, um, at least up in the front, because you have, obviously, Max Crosby. Yes, Chandler Jones is there. Not as big of an impact player on the front anymore, but still a great player. And then Tyree Wilson, just his build, his physicality, like the way he plays the game works so well. Okay. I, I like that take. So the only reason I didn't have him is because of Chandler Jones and Max uh Mac, uh Max Crosby. I don't I don't think he'll get adequate playing time. But uh, I don't know. The other side of that is, you know, Chandler Jones is kind of old. You know, yeah. they could start phasing him out and, you know, doing like 50 50 on reps and stuff. So hopefully, um, if so, Tyree Wilson is on my list as well. So I'll have to agree with you. But I just don't think he'll get enough playing time. I think yeah. he'll probably want to just like rest him and sit him a lot. Yeah. My other sleeper, Marvin Mims, wide receiver for the Broncos. Ooh, he that's is, a good one, too. He is such like an interesting player to watch. Like him at Oklahoma was just wild to see like like his burst of speed like the acceleration is absolutely insane he can yep. really just do anything so i think he could be a, a very good player for the broncos this season i like that take and then uh, surprise one. player to watch so i have a couple um okay. of, unfortunately it's been ones that we've already talked about like i have uh, michael mayer on here i think he'll surprise people uh nick bolton i think he'll be a good shout uh carl laftis is probably the most i think that people will be surprised with is him yeah uh and i'll just run through the rest of my list because it's not that many people um Kadarius tony yes I, I honestly just put him on here because i want it to happen i don't know if it will i i think that he seems like the easy choice here for the surprise really? player to watch. Like, it seems like everybody is high on Kadarius Tony. I, I don't know. He was just so, like, everybody was so, like, oh, this is such a nasty move. Like, he's going to be with Patrick Mahomes. And but he just never really put up numbers. Yeah. At a very quiet Super Bowl. Uh, I, mean, I wouldn't say quiet. He made, like, the most important play of the Super Bowl, just well, in yeah, special the teams. Was cool. Yeah, it, it was cool. But, like, I, I would have liked to have seen him be like, you know, more of a receiver. He caught a touchdown. Um, and okay, Grayson. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying. Like 19 yards. <laughs> Good enough. Uh, but um, yeah, I, I think uh, I'm ready for him to make the jump too, though. I think he's yeah. got, he's got good talent. My other guy, um, Chargers nickel cornerback, Jasir Taylor, young guy. Um, wow. He's just like a, like he can just run around the field. He can keep up with anybody. I think having JC Jackson and Asante Samuel and Derwin James all just kind of backing him up is going to give him a big burst of confidence and really help out his game. So he could be a guy that you look at just being like an impact player, kind of like how, um, oh, why the, why am I absolutely blanking on his name? He's on the Bengals, used to play for the Steelers, also oh, in Mike Hilton. Yeah, kind of like how yeah. Mike Hilton plays. I think I could see Jasir Taylor kind of taking that role for the Chargers. I like that. Um, Isaiah Pacheco, another guy that yeah. I have. Um, he was fantastic last season, and I know the Chiefs run that kind of dual back system. My phone's ringing. <laughs> Do you have a home phone, or is that just your phone? Yeah, we, like your we, we still have a home phone. No way. I'm keeping this yeah. in because that's hilarious. Yep. No. <laughs> Look, it even 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 it even says he's calling. <laughs> I can't get over the fact that you have a home phone. <laughs> yeah, dude, it's uh, it's pretty, it's it's helpful, you know. And you have one in your room. Uh, yeah, it got moved here. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Oh, they're leaving a message. How nice. <laughs> can, you, can you even hear that? Her talking. <laughs> Kinda. It's just like, it sounds like nothing. But, very muffled. Yeah. Um, but yeah, oh Isaiah gosh. Pacheco. Uh, I like I was saying. I know that they run a tool, uh, a dual um, back system over there. Not a tool back, a dual back system. Um, and I, I think you know, although he will have to compete with reps, I think he'll. He still needs to look better. I, I'm ready for him to make the jump as well. Yeah, I, I like that. Um, yep. 
Is that all? No, I have two more. Okay. Okay. Uh, Asante Samuel Jr. was another yep. one, um, or Trevor Lawrence Sr., as I should say. I, I would like for him to just be I, – I like him, so I, I would just like him to ball out. Um, another one that I have, and you're going to agree with this one, Gerald Everett. Yes. I, I would like to see him uh, – you know, there were a lot of guys that went down for the Chargers last year, and Gerald Everett had good numbers, I think, because of that. But at the same time, I feel like he really proved himself last year. So I would like him – to become a bigger part of the offense and also really ball out. Yeah, I got one last one. Greg Dolchich from the Broncos. Oh, yeah. I like him. Yeah, he was definitely like a fantasy guy last year. Just like a pick up a tight end for a week kind of guy. <laughs> but I had him for a little bit. Yeah, I think everybody did at some point. <laughs> Asked around. Yeah, but yeah, he seems kind of like the guy that like, yeah, we saw him last year because he put up some good numbers a couple of times, but like this year he could become a more consistent player. I like that take. All right. I think that does it. So the AFC West is decided. <laughs> <laughs> yep, we, we figured it out. <laughs> yep. Uh, next week we'll do what? It's um, – I guess we'll go um, south? I'm going to do sure. south or north? Let's do south. Okay. We'll do in the south next week. Texans are winning it all. Uh, <laughs> all right. The Gold Cup, Gold Cup quarterfinals will start off Panama yeah. versus Qatar. Um, I was brutally wrong with my prediction. <laughs> I thought Qatar was going to win, and um, instead, uh, Ismail Diaz scored a hat trick, and um, Edgar Barcenas put up a goal as well in a four nil victory for Panama. Yeah, um, basically just complete domination. Yeah. Um, that's yeah, really what happened. I mean, the Panamanians, they, they're, they've they been having a good tournament, and they really just continue to prove that against Qatar. So, mm -hmm. Yeah, it was a, a fantastic showing for Panama. Like, yeah. Crazy. Yeah, especially uh, the hat trick guy. I mean, yeah. damn, he just destroyed the other team, or Qatar. He only played 69 minutes, too. Yeah. Subbed out. Absolutely insane showing. Yeah. Um, yeah, but Qatar just... Their defense was so fucking bad. Yeah. I mean, it appears like it, especially on that um, left side. Just no answer for Ismail Diaz. <laughs> yeah. Brutal. Brutal stuff. Um, let's just get into this next match. This, You know, the, the Panama one wasn't too crazy. Yeah. But um, Mexico versus Costa Rica. Mexico takes it 2-0. I'm... Is it weird that I'm kind of surprised? No. Okay, because I, I feel like Costa Rica is good enough, and I don't think that this Mexican side is all that great. No, I don't either. They just, okay. um, I mean, like kind of just looking at the uh, the match ratings here from uh, like the program that I use in Mexico, just all across the board had a solid game. Nobody played bad. Yeah. Let me ask you a question. When are they going to get a new goalie? Dude, Ochoa's been there forever. Yeah. I, I, I was just thinking about that a couple <laughs> days ago. Like, I saw the headline, you know, like Mexico, Costa Rica, you know, like Fox Sports or something like that. And Ochoa was like the player they used to, like, you know, show off like a Mexican player. And I was just like, you know, it's 2023. Yeah. <laughs> and he's still playing. Yeah. Like, you at least could have showed like Edson Alvarez, great player. Um, yeah. It's going to be a sad day when guys. he retires. Yeah, uh, that will suck. I'll never forget his showing in, uh, what, 2014 World Cup? Yeah, I, yeah. I mean, every game for him. Crazy. It's just unbelievable. Yeah, him and Tim Howard. Yeah, Tim Howard had that game against Belgium. Yeah. Dude, a couple days ago, that turned like, uh, that turned nine years old a couple days ago. Oh, that's weird. Yeah, that makes me feel like <laughs> shit, really. That is very weird. <laughs> uh, yep. Yeah, this, this game... It's it was a decent game. Uh, obviously, like the penalty by Pineda. Um, I don't know what what caused that penalty. Did you did you see? No. At all? Okay, no clue what happened in this game except for just looking at you know like the um, lineup page. Yeah, I, I I don't know. I wasn't excited to watch this game. I'm not, like I don't I don't think this Mexico team is very good. It's it, it's not their best players, which is yep. it's obvious. Um, but yeah, it's just it's just kind of a boring lineup. 
Yeah, maybe if, you know, like, Kaylor Navas was still here. Costa Rica used to have this player, um, something Ruiz. He played for Fulham for a long time. Oh, he was very yeah. entertaining to watch. And, I mean, they still have Joel Campbell. He uh, had a couple shows at uh, Arsenal yeah. um, in his playing career. But um, <laughs> Costa Rica, dude, they have this uh, center back, Kendall Watts, Waston. Yeah. S, S before the T. He is a fucking unit. And I, when I watch Costa Rica versus El Salvador, bro, this dude's like 6'5", 220. Center back. Yeah, he looks huge. Holy shit. He's, he's massive. <laughs> that is crazy. Not a very good defender, though. <laughs> Makes sense. Massive. He's like almost too big. Yeah. Yeah. He S- he's 6'5", about 200 pounds. Okay. Yeah, he's a big old boy. Wait, does he play for FC Cincinnati? Yes. Oh, okay. Well, I don't – actually, I don't think he does now. He looks like oh. he plays for – at least the, the website I'm on says he plays for Deportivo Saprissa in Costa Rica. But um, I don't know. Yeah, this game just – it just didn't really interest me whatsoever, personally. Yeah, same. Um, same. But <laughs> the next match – did interest me. Jamaica versus Guatemala. We talked about it. This was going to be the best matchup, and I really don't think it... I don't think it disappointed. Jamaica takes no, it 1-0. A great showing. Um, Yeah, great showing from, uh, you know, guys that you and I are familiar with, like uh, yeah. Andre Blake, the very, very good MLS goalie. Um, he, he looks absolutely fantastic for Jamaica. Um, Mikhail Antonio, you know, was another guy that played in this game. Leon Bailey was here. So, like, I mean, Jamaica has a couple guys. Yeah. Um, I think I even talked about that last pod. Yeah, but, a fantastic um, match uh, for Damari Gray of uh, Everton. Oh, That'd yeah, and Damari Gray. Yeah. Um, you know, I, <laughs> I, I really liked both of these teams, so I'm kind of sad that they played each other. It, yeah. it would have been cool to see, you know, Guatemala, who was 116th ranked going into this game versus 63 ranked Jamaica who like, it was just crazy. Like both of these teams had such a good gold cup. And um, I, I'm honestly sad that one has to go. <laughs> yeah. The, the I looked a little bit more into this like Jamaican team. They have a ton of players in the prem. Oh yeah. Yeah. So their left back wow. that scored the goal. Uh, Amari bell plays for Luton town, newly promoted Luton town. Okay. Um, Leon Bailey just made the move to Aston Villa. Mikel Antonio, of course, with West Ham. Damari Gray with Everton. Uh, Bobby Reed with Fulham. Uh, yeah, a couple of Premier League players in this one. Very cool. And their their center back, Deshaun Bernard's in the Man U Academy. 22 years old. Oh, wow. I wonder if, I wonder if this Jamaican team would be considered like, um, like generational. Like, I wonder if they've ever been as good as they are. I don't know. Right it, now. it seems very good. And they've got a good batch of young talent. Yeah, I was about to say, like, it's it's just a young, solid group. Yeah, definitely. And then I, I don't know any of the um, Guatemalan players, but, no. like, like I said, man, they had a really good tournament. I mean, very, very solid. Yeah, they're a fun team to watch. They were, yeah. Very, like, you know, very hard and fast. Yeah. Team. Yeah, like a, I, yeah, a really physical, annoyed. very physical team. But they, yeah, you're right. They play a very quick, quick brand of uh, soccer there. But um, the next match, USA, Canada, a uh, great, 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 great match. Yeah, uh, when I texted you that one night, um, I guess would it have been last night or the night before? Um, it was Sunday. Yeah, Sunday, I believe. Yeah, um, the United States was down in extra time, uh, one to two, in like the hundred and tenth minute. Yeah. And then Dad and I flipped the channel back, uh, you know, after like a, a couple hours or something, and the U.S. ended up winning the game on penalties. Yeah, insane, insane. Well, and kind of the crazy part of this game, like the U.S., like the first goal was scored in the eighty eighth minute by the U.S. Um, who was it that scored? Uh, Vasquez, yeah, Brandon Vasquez came on as a substitute, scored a goal, takes the lead in the 88th, and then um, uh, uh, Vittoria, the center back, Stephen Vittoria, uh, c- converts a penalty in the 90th plus three to tie it up to go to extra time. 
And then um, y- uh, Jacob Schaffelberg, who plays for Nashville SC, scored the go-ahead goal in extra time at the 109th minute. And then an own goal from Scott Kennedy of Canada equalizes the match for the U.S. And then and that's in the 114th minute. They go to Penns and Matt Turner put on a fucking clinic. Really? Yeah, Matt Turner, uh, I think he saved, like, three penalties. Dang. Yeah, just him go. phenomenal. Yeah, Matt Turner, um, who is it? Is it um, is him and Miles that are, like, the only players that would play with, like, the senior team, right? Uh, yeah. Kind of, yeah, looking at this lineup, it looks like, yeah, those are the main two. Dang, but... I mean, what a showing by the United States. Did you see that a um that one of the linesmen of this game got hit in the face with a soccer ball? Yeah. And had to be switched out. Yeah. It created like a ten minute like um stoppage time, like added time. That's crazy. At the end of the first half. It was insane. I've never seen that happen before. <laughs> yeah, that is insane. Uh but now with these games concluding, semifinals are set and We've got some pretty good matchups, honestly. Oh, We've man. got it- USA versus Panama. Uh, that one being played, actually, as you're listening today, uh, at 5.30 p.m. And then Jamaica versus Mexico at 8 p.m. Like, these are fantastic matchups. Panama versus USA, I think it's going to be a great match. I do, too. Um, God, I don't, I honestly I don't have any predictions, man. Of course, I, I hope the United States go through I personally, I hope it's I hope it's us in Jamaica, man. I, yeah, I would love a USA Jamaica final. I would as well. I'm, I, I'm thinking like it'll be a close one with Panama. I think maybe like two one. Yeah, I, I think it'll be a hard fought game. Yeah. I, I'm gonna go two two. Go into extra time. United States will end up winning the game four two. Okay, not on penalties. Got it. And then Jamaica versus Mexico. I think Jamaica's just easily got this one. I think they're just most definitely the better team here. I'm going to go, oh, man. I hope it doesn't happen, but I'm going to go 1-0 Mexico. Okay. Um, I'm going to go 1-0 Jamaica. I like it. Yeah, I just I don't trust Mexico's goal-scoring ability. <laughs> I, yeah, I mean, it's, uh, it's going to be harder against uh, Jamaica than it was Costa Rica for sure. Yeah. But um, just a quick thing, England's U21s, they win the U21 Euros. Some very familiar names in this lineup for uh, the U.S. Or not the U.S., England. Um, <laughs> guys like Emil Smith-Rowe of Arsenal. Oh, okay, first of all, a lot of 22-year-olds on the U21 team. Yeah. It bothers me. But nonetheless, Curtis Jones, who scored the sole uh, goal in this match, um, he had a great showing. He's obviously plays for Liverpool. Um, Anthony Gordon, who plays for Newcastle. Uh, Morgan Gibbs Levi White. Colwell. Yeah, Levi Colwell uh, for Chelsea. Just a, a ton of very good players. Um, yes. And James Trafford in goal. Saves a penalty, and it was huge. Like, absolutely game-changing 90th plus nine, he saves that penalty. Oh my God. Yeah, so shout out James Trafford of the Man City Academy, 20 years old. <laughs> it's insane. Yeah, uh, no name but Duque as well, came off the bench in this one. Uh, another Chelsea. Yeah. Chelsea guy. Yeah, so congrats to England on winning a trophy. My dad said it was a fantastic game. Uh, who was it against Spain, the yeah. final? Yeah, Spain. Yeah. Actually also has a, a great team. Um, a lot of their young guys have kind of graduated to the senior team, though. But, yeah, still a bunch of great players on this uh, Spain team. You have, like, Antonio Blanco, who plays for Real Madrid. Um, Rodri, but not the Man City one. The Real Batiste right wing. Uh, um, yeah, a couple of good ones. Sergio Gomez, who is a young guy that plays for uh, Man City. So, yeah, a, gr- a great team here for Spain as well. And... I just think, you know, England has such great young talent right now that 
they were kind of destined to win this one. Yeah, no, I, I completely agree. Yeah, that was Spain's under 21's first loss in 18 matches. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah. They, they're looking pretty good, too. Yeah, crazy. Crazy, crazy stuff. But, um, yeah, let's get into transfer news. I'm, this one's interesting because we didn't have a ton of deals happen this week. Yeah, you know, not obviously a much shorter span than you know the the break that we typically have between episodes, but um, yeah, not too much happened. So uh, let's start with some guys that aren't leaving. Uh, Romelu Uh-oh. Lukaku wants to stay in Europe and said that he will not negotiate with Saudi clubs. Oh, uh, good for him. I, yeah. I don't really like him that much, but uh, good for him. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> and um, let's see, Paul Pogba. Also, turning down a transfer to Saudi Arabia, uh, which is surprising. For him. He seems like so the too. guy that would go to Saudi Arabia. Oh, big time. Um, yeah, no, I, I completely agree. Yep. But big deal here. Somebody that is on the move, Christian Pulisic, is officially headed to AC Milan. <laughs> I wanted him out of Chelsea so bad until Pochettino – was like, ah, I want to keep him. And, like, you know, you think when a manager comes into a team and they're like, nah, I want this guy, even when it's a guy who's, like, you know, rumored to be out. And I was, you know, actually kind of excited. And then, like, a week later, he's uh, off to AC Milan, which is a uh, way better team for him to be a part of anyway. Yeah. So, yeah. I think he'll be an immediate starter because they have uh, Rafael Leal and then that Salimacher. Salimacher's a guy that they like. Yeah. And Christian Pulisic is a huge upgrade on Salimacher. So, um. We're going to be good. We're going to be set there. Yeah. Uh, I hope he plays so well. Yes. As long as it doesn't take away from how good he plays for the U.S. Yes. <laughs> um, <laughs> it has been confirmed that David De Gea will be leaving Manchester United. Uh, this we, don't, one, we don't know where he's going, but he is leaving. Makes no sense to me, dude. Yeah. No so, like, how much Saudi money are you willing to bet he ends up in Saudi Arabia? I mean that has to be right. I couldn't see him staying in the prem. I, I really couldn't even see him going to Spain. Really? Yeah, like that's the only other place I could see him going is Spain. Maybe Turkey. You know, sometimes a lot of big players end up with like Galatasaray or Fenerbahce or you know Besiktas. Maybe Turkey, but like even then, like I don't really think so. I I, I think Saudi is probably the most probable yeah. for him. Yeah, I think the MLS just isn't good enough for him. Yeah. Personally. It's yeah, it's it's too hard. <laughs> yeah, sure. Uh but there have been some good conversations going on for his possible replacement in Andre Onana. It looks like that one's advancing pretty quickly. Uh so Andre Onana, it looks like they've agreed on personal terms possibly. And um just trying to figure out the, the proper fee for him. But I think that's a great replacement. Um, yeah, Andre Onana is uh, just a beast. Um, yeah, I mean, we we covered him a lot, you know, in Inter's uh, Champions League run, and he was, you know, sometimes the reason they would win important games. So that's um, that's going to be a huge signing if Manchester United can get him, or if you know he goes somewhere else. I've also heard Chelsea could be in the mix, but it looks like United probably is most likely. Yeah, I, I think that. Him and Ten Hogs link is the driving force. Oh, yeah, the Ajax link. Yeah. Yep. Uh, Manchester United have also begun initial talks for midfielder Sofyan Amrabat. Um, I think this is uh, an interesting move because he doesn't seem – he's not a starter on this team. Um, yeah. And, and, like, he was pr- – I believe he's been with Fiorentina – but he hasn't been yes. that great. He had a great World Cup, though, for Morocco. And I think that's kind of the driving force for interest. Yeah, he um, played 29 games in the Serie A with uh, Florentina uh, last season. Um, yeah, I don't really... It's just a depth move, Yeah. I guess. That's really all I have to say about it. I mean, maybe this guy's solid. I mean, uh, having a lot of caps with a, you know, a, even like a top six Serie A team is pretty good. So, yeah, I don't know. And, and like he's been good in the past. Um, he's played quite a few places now, but I don't know. It just doesn't seem like a Manchester United signing. Yeah, no, I, I, I think that's actually probably the best 
way to put it. Um, yeah. is it's, it doesn't seem like they're kind of signing. Exactly. And then no, uh, I like the way you said that. <laughs> yeah. But Rasmus Hoshland, I don't, I don't know. I'm not going to figure out how to pronounce it until he actually plays in the prem. Um, that's how you say it. Is it? Okay. Yeah, that works. Uh, it's the Toaster Shuttle guy. Yeah, I, I get that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm well aware of what you were doing. Yeah. Um, but Rasmus, I'm Rasmus. And Manchester United have agreed on personal terms. So it looks like that move is probably going to happen. And there's a possibility that Manchester United would loan out Mason Greenwood to Atalanta to help this deal get get done. That's You don't really see that a lot. No. I, I feel like there is like some times where like you'd sell off a player to a team that you're going to pick up another guy from, but a loan just seems kind of used. Like, yeah, you'll get him for a season, but it's not that big of a deal shit how about this stat in the uh, euro qualifiers he's played four games and has six goals yeah it's pretty incredible yeah <laughs> rasmus hodgland is fantastic i like this guy and um let's get to the next striker i i guess yeah he's a striker we'll stick with it yeah. uh mbappe <laughs> it appears that he will not extend his contract but is insisting to stay at PSG until 2024. And apparently this decision has really upset uh, their owner, the Emir of Qatar, and club president, uh, Nasir Al-Khalefi. Wow. Good pronunciation. Thank you. Thank um, you. Wh- Mbappe just makes no, no sense anymore. I why, think he- why, would he, why would he not want to go na- at this point? I think I, he wants to piss off PSG because he's gonna petty. leave. He's gonna leave on a free transfer next oh, summer. Oh, that's what. Okay, yeah. I didn't even think about that. Yeah, and so like they can't get rid of him if he doesn't want to go. They they literally. I've seen reports they might bench him next season. Dang, that's incredible. Yeah, I really. But like. At the same time, though, like you got to kind of fault Mbappe because I think selfishly as a fan, I, I, I don't want to see him benched at all. I don't like Mbappe, but like no one, no one like Mbappe needs to be not playing. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I would hate to see him, you know, hold out or take time off, which I know soccer players don't really do that. That's more of an NFL thing. But like still, I kind of just would like him to leave. You know, make make breaking news, entertain the podcast, you know, make this huge transfer, and then just ball out. That's my ideal scenario. Yeah, I, I think so as well. Um, I don't know. I, I feel like there's still a possibility he gets sold this summer. But I, do too. I think that what he wants is the opportunity to go wherever. Yeah. And that's what comes with leaving on a free. Yeah. No, that's... um. That's a good point, too. Yeah. So, um, next move, uh, a couple of guys going to the Saudi Arabia. Sergey um, Milinkovic Savic. Kind of surprised by this one. He's heading to Al Hilal uh, in the Saudi Arabian League. I don't know. I This is kind of another guy where I feel like he still has some time. Oh, th- this guy is so. I, I like, I can't even begin to tell you how much this move pisses me off. This yeah. guy is just very very solid 28 years old but like way better than he, he's very underrated is what i'm trying to say uh, like nobody really talks about this guy i think probably because he's serbian and he plays for lazio which is like a high placing italian team but they don't get the media like ac milan inter and juve do this dude could have like been a superstar in the premier league i think yeah well and he, I, he was linked with premier league teams for a while yeah, well, he was linked to AC Milan just like yeah. this summer. And it came out like a couple of hours ago that Lazio's president rejected a 140 million euro offer for him from Milan. Exactly. Like, that's how much this dude is worth. And it just, man, this move really sucks. I hate this one because I really thought he was going to go to the prim, like, probably like two or three years ago, maybe even last season. And, you know, finally be on TV where we could watch him and really see how good he is. But now he's just, you know, gone even further away. 
<laughs> yeah. Yeah, that one's a, an interesting move. And then Jordan Henderson looks like he might be joining uh, El Atifak with uh, Steven Gerrard, the manager. Looks like he's trying to just grab another former Liverpool player. Well, current yeah. at the moment, but. I don't necessarily hate this move. I think Jordan no. Henderson is a super overrated player. Um, and I don't, I think it's good that he's going to be with Stevie G though. So. Yeah. Yeah. Former teammates. Yes. Um, looks like Luis Enrique is dead set on Harry Kane being his striker next season. At PSG. Really? Yeah. And supposedly Harry Kane's down. Over Bayern? <laughs> I don't know, man. It's, like, I think the money's talking. This PSG, no matter how good they are, like it always just seems like a shit show over yes. there. Like there's just so much ego involved with the ownership and the coaches and the players that it's like almost unbearable. Like I really yeah. can't stand PSG. Well, so I don't understand this one. At when all. you when you think about at least the structure of PSG, your owner, um, literally essentially owns Qatar. And your club president is a part of their public investment fund. He's also, I believe, the president of BN Sports. Oh, wow. He's on the board for a ton of huge Saudi companies that are involved in sports media. Like, they're going to try and get as many players as possible. And they're going to get linked to every good player because they're going to hash out the money. Yeah. Like I just at the same time though, it's it never seems like a good culture to me. Like yeah, they're gonna win the league uh, or come second place at worst. That I mean, coming second place is a horrible season for them. They're gonna be in quarterfinals and semifinals of the Champions League, and just recently played against uh, against Bayern in the final. But it just doesn't ever seem like a good culture to be a part of, and like. It surprises me that Harry Kane is also linked with Bayern, and we've heard nothing from Harry Kane on his side um, in, in regards to moving to Bayern, but he says that he's in with PSG. I don't know. That That's just – I I don't know. Yeah, it's weird. It is weird because, like, those teams are polar opposite, and I feel like Bayern is a way better culture. Like, when they celebrate, like, their league titles, have you seen how much beer there is? Yeah. Like, that just looks like a good time. And PSG, you know, are going to vacations in Dubai for winning the Champions League, or no, uh, the league, uh, which, I mean, also sounds pretty cool, but, like, still, I don't know. Yeah, I'd be down for a, a trip to Dubai. I'd be down for either, I think. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, yeah, I would love to chug some beers in, in Germany, and I can say that because I could over there. Oh, and I have yes, you can. In Europe. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see, the next one, another PSG move. Supposedly, this one is getting close to happening. Bernardo Silva to PSG. Uh, PSG has prepared an 80 million euro bid, and it appears that he actually wants to leave Man City this summer. Okay. Um, you know, all that bullshit talking that I did on PSG, I think uh, I would still like that better than Saudi Arabia. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I, I, so, I actually think this move kind of makes sense for Bernardo Silva. I do too. I do too. Yeah. When you've won the Premier League this many times, you just go somewhere else. Coming off of a treble, get your yeah. bag. Go move to Paris and have some fun. Yeah. Drink some wine. Yes. Uh, next one Chelsea set to send David Dotro Fofana on loan to Union Berlin. This one, um, I'm excited about this guy because if I, I'm looking him up real fast. Yes. Okay. He is the player that I thought it was. So this uh, Ivory Coast striker. I, I really like how like the the small kind of highlights that I've seen of this guy. Um, I think a move to the Bundesliga is, is going to be good for him. I, I really yeah. do. I think he'll get some playing time at the Union Berlin, and I think it's all going to be uh, sunshine and rainbows for him. Yeah, and, and Union Berlin uh, burst onto the scene last year like crazy yes. Yes, and, and had a lot of great players, but – it seems like they might end up being kind of the next Leipzig, Bayer Leverkusen type. Like, send your players there, let them grow, and bring them back. Yeah, where were they a top like seven team? I think they were like season? possibly top four. Like, they were very good. Um, yeah, I, 
check that. I don't. Pulling it up right now. No. They. Oh, never mind. <laughs> anyway, oh, yes. Like... Never mind. Never mind. They, they, yeah, they were top four and they were number four. Damn. Yeah, it went Bayern, Dortmund, Leipzig, Union, Berlin. Okay, there you go. And like With prior... a capacity of 22,000 at their home stadium. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. And like they've only been in the Bundesliga for a couple of years. Like, yeah, they're a really old team, but they've been. Yeah, they've been missed. in since 2019. But like prior to that, like they had been in the Bundesliga 2 for years. Oh, wow. Good for them. That's yeah. awesome. And they're getting a great Chelsea. Uh... Chelsea loan player yeah. too. He's, David uh, Fauna is going to be great. Well, they're getting a great Leeds loan as well. Okay. Brendan Aronson. Yeah. Heading nice. there on loan. I love it. I hey, wish they would have permanently sold him. It, really? Yeah. I wish they would have because I don't want, like, because, like, I don't, I don't know. I don't think Leeds is really going to come back quickly. <laughs> You don't think so? <laughs> I don't. I really oh, don't. Man. They have Kaylor Navas and they, you know, Weston McKinney and all the Kaylor Navas plays for Nottingham Forest. That's right. <laughs> I, I knew it was one of the Premier League teams yeah. he transferred. To. They have Tyler Adams. Yes. Who I think? Wait, is he leaving too? I thought Tyler Adams. I feel like we might have talked about that. I can check. I can check. Um. No. No. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's what it was. I saw that uh, West Ham was interested in him to replace Declan. Okay. Uh, gotcha. But still, yeah, I don't think Leeds is you know going to be back in the Prem next year. We'll we'll see. We'll see. Maybe they'll look good. But I think this is great for Brendan Aronson. Um, yes. Obviously, he's kind of been like he, he really was not good last year. Uh, we'll get out in front of that one. But <laughs> I have you know liked what I've seen from him in his kind of short career because what like he hasn't like did he spend he spent time in Germany didn't he before this or am I wrong um, with, uh, Tyler Adams did if you're still thinking of him maybe oh, maybe that is um, who I was thinking of you can check again yeah I just no no he played for uh, Salzburg that's what it was yes yep. yeah not Leipzig uh but still Another team that's a great youth academy, but prior to that, spending time in the MLS and obviously had a, a pretty good showing for the United States uh, internationally. He's been very good. So, I don't know. It just seemed like Leeds didn't work last year for him. I don't think yeah. he's quite ready for the Prem. No, and, and that's okay because the Prem truly is a different beast, but yeah. um, definitely a player that I don't want to see, you know, stay down in, in that bad form. Correct. And I think union Berlin would be a perfect shout for him. Cause it's, it's going to be no media attention. Um, still going to be a big deal, you know, in the Bundesliga and everything, yeah. but it's going to be a lot more tame. I think. Agreed. Yep. Uh, it looks like Barcelona finally looking to sell a couple guys. seems like everybody's uh, been, it seems like they've been buying a lot. looks like they're going to yep. be selling both Ferran Torres and Frank Kessie. I so it's actually Kessier, and, and oh, the only reason okay. I know that is I've been obsessed with this guy for years. And he was at uh, AC Milan, right? Yeah, and he was fantastic at AC Milan. Like imagine, imagine N'Golo Conte, but not as not as good of a defender, but a lot faster and a lot bigger. Um, I, I love Franck Kessier. Uh, and it's it's a shame that I guess he never really worked out at Barcelona. Never really got the playing time I thought he deserved yeah. either. But I hope he can come back to AC Milan. I think that'd be actually a great move for a turn. They just lost to Nale. That's true. So, yeah, but and uh Ferran Torres, I'm just I'm just kind of surprised, really. Yeah. One of the guys he came up uh through their youth system, correct? Uh I don't know. Or, I don't think so. No, no, he didn't. They picked him up from somebody else. Oh, he, yeah, he, uh, Manchester City. Yep. I knew I recognized his name. Yeah, he played at Valencia uh, as a kid. But nonetheless, I, I think there was time for Ferran Torres to leave. Um, he he needs to get more playing time. He's a good player. He just needed to go somewhere where they're actually gonna let him play. Yeah. So I I think he stays in Spain though. 
I do too. It's a it's a shame that you you can't work out with Barcelona there. I mean, like if if I was a young Spanish center mid, there's nowhere on earth I'd want to be but Barcelona. But yeah, like you said, he just hasn't been getting the playing time that he probably deserves. Um, so yeah, it's probably time for him to leave. But I say stay in Spain, kind of like you. Yep. And then um, let's see a manager news. Newest Saudi manager is another familiar name, uh, Al Fateh have hired Slavin Bilic as their wow. manager. A, a weird guy to go over there, I guess? I don't know. I don't really know how to feel. I, he just looks like a guy that is not a fan of, of Middle Easterners. <laughs> you know what I mean, though? I mean, you look at him. Yeah. He looks a little that, racist. Uh, who is he? Uh, he's a Croatian? Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, he, he has that face of, you know, like, yeah, I can see it. I can see it. Yeah. He's actually, this is his second stint in the Middle East, so maybe not. Really? <laughs> yeah, in 2018 and 19, he was the coach of uh, Al uh, it, it, Itihad? Itihad, yeah. Itihad, yeah, with the, the one that uh, Benzema and uh, Conte went to. Yeah, he was also yeah. in uh, Beijing. Yes. An interesting what? managerial career for, for Slavin Bilic. Yeah, and, and in <laughs> Turkey for a little while. Yeah, <laughs> and and Russia. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah, what a weird managing career. But I yeah, I I know him from his time at West Ham, most notably fifteen and seventeen, because uh, that was when oh, I yeah. first started paying attention to the Premier League. Um, but yeah, spent time with West Brom and Watford. So, it, like, he's a good manager. Yeah, he's the kind of guy that I would expect to go to Saudi Arabia, but at the same time, like I said, he seems a little racist, but I guess not. <laughs> he seems very diversified. Yeah. Uh, and but then that's... the next thing, the biggest news, biggest stuff, Lionel Messi will be presented as an Inter-Miami player on July 16th. Wow. I cannot stop reading Inter-Miami and thinking Inter-Milan. <laughs> Um, yeah, he has, uh, Jordi Alba is going to play with him now over there, isn't he? Is that, is that happening? I, I thought it was, um, let me see. It may have just been like a personal terms kind of thing. Um, the first headline that came up, it was Jordi Alba may be forced to miss inter Miami unveiling with Lionel Messi. Okay. So he's obviously going. <laughs> oh, his, his wife is about to give birth. Ah, okay. So that would, <clears throat> yeah, I guess that would be kind of why, like, either either he is going and it's um, delaying his unveiling, or the pregnancy is, like, he basically is going to sign, but, like, the transfer talks have stopped. Could be. Because of his wife, maybe. So, yeah. who knows? I don't know. We're about to see Inter-Barcelona in Miami. Yeah. So... And I, I like what you said, though. Claudio Bravo would probably be more of a better signing than Messi is <laughs> to enter to enter Miami. I think it's just more; it fits better. It sounds yeah, more. It real. sounds right. Yeah. But yeah, soon That's enough. Exactly. Soon enough, we're gonna see the exact same team that uh, that won that Champions League a couple years ago. Yep, and they're gonna climb all the way back from yep. bottom of the East. So when's Danny Alves gonna get there? Right <laughs> at this point. <laughs> Ronaldinho could come out of retirement. <laughs> yeah. Oh Lord. We'll see, man. We yep. we will see. Messy it. effect. Yaya Tora is gonna give yeah. up his managerial job. <laughs> wow. But yeah, that's. I, I'm glad this is finally happening. It seems like it took way too long. Yep. I mean, yeah, but it, and we have a date, though. That's crazy yeah. that we have a date for Messi yeah, in, in America. And it's not even, let's see, this episode, we're recording this on the 11th. So, like what? Five days. Four, four more days from the yeah. recording? Yeah. So Sunday, yeah, he'll be, be unveiled. Yes. <clears throat> crazy. But I'm very excited for this next thing. I'm announcing my final five. So kind of like <laughs> uh, like a college, like a high school recruit. Um, I'm going to put up literally like a high school recruiting graphic for this. Uh, my <laughs> final five for Premier League fandom in no particular order. I want that stated. <clears throat> there is an order. Start off. No, there's not. 
because uh, <laughs> I literally typed all the teams in and randomized them and then put them in here. Um, the first team, Brighton and Hove Albion. First team on the list. Big fan of really? watching them play. I really liked watching them play last year. Um, guys, Solly March, very fun to watch. I know, uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, Moises Caicedo uh, is most likely leaving, but very fun to watch last year. Julio and CISO was very good. Uh, I love, uh, I think it's Kaoru Mitoma. Uh, okay. Yeah, love, loved watching them play last year. Uh, next one, Aston Villa. Once again, another team. I just liked watching watching them play last year. I think they've made some good pickups in the transfer window. They're enticing. Guys like Leon Bailey. Um, not a big fan of the new logo. Got to be honest. But still, uh, Aston Villa in the running. Uh, my third one, probably the most bandwagon-ish pick is Newcastle. Um, but I do like that they're like just now. You know, in recent memory, just now bursting onto the scene. Obviously, they they have a history, but um, you know they're they're a team that I'm interested in, and I know, yeah, they have oil money now, blah blah blah. But <laughs> they have players that I love. Like we talked about, him, I talked about him a lot this past season. Bruno Gimaraj is like oh, my yeah. favorite player to watch. <laughs> he <laughs> yeah, plays, he's he's, uh, so he's up there for me too. Yeah, yeah. and like signing Sandra Tonali, it, it just they're bringing in a bunch of guys that I really want to watch play. And so Newcastle is definitely definitely made the top 5 because of it. And then my next one West Ham. The first ever team that I actually rooted for in the Premier League. Shout out Spencer FC. I think I've told this story, but yeah, when I first started like playing like FIFA and like getting interested in the Premier League, I watched a ton of Spencer FC videos. Um, he had the um, the Forever Blown Bubbles series on Ultimate Team. I think it was FIFA 15. And that series made me love West Ham at the time. Um, but then when I kind of stopped watching for a little bit, I didn't really pay attention at all. Didn't pay attention to West Ham. And they haven't been all that great <laughs> since. <Yeah. laughs> but... I had to put them in the top five because, you know, they're definitely up there. It's a team that I'm emotionally connected to. Yes. And then my last one, my only team that is newly promoted, Burnley. And it's all because of J.J. Watt and Vincent Company. <laughs> only two reasons. Yeah, that's it. I hate the new logo. I hate that they changed the colors. Uh, it bothers me. But if, the, if I do decide on them, because I personally haven't really decided <laughs> I, I keep flipping between these five really but if i do decide to go on with burnley um i will not be happy with the logo and i will make it a problem could have been a chelsea fan with the me man it would have been the perfect time to Dude, jump on board no. all these new players are gonna come in we i mean it's shit <laughs> last season was shit wouldn't be a bandwagon dude like i wanted to pick some of these teams that are just like the the power like the the names in in England, and I just I couldn't will myself to do it. I I, I want my fandom to build with the team, and that's kind of where I'm at right now. Like yes, Chelsea is rebuilding for sure, but like Chelsea has history mm. recently. Obviously Manchester City and like Arsenal, Man United, like Liverpool. Like I'm staying away from those teams because. I want to be part of like the their first Premier League in however long, their first Premier League at all. Yeah. I want to be a part of that. All right. Well, let me know. <laughs> we'll see. Uh, teams oh, that man. I were close to making the list. Um, Luton Town was close. That would have been cool. Love Luton Town. Uh, yep. Brentford was close to making it. Uh, I thought about Tottenham for about five seconds before remembering <laughs> that they can't win a trophy. And let's see, uh, Fulham was also uh, a thought. Ah, oh, Fulham. Yeah, narrowly missed. They were probably they'd probably be number six, but uh, I've decided against them. I'm I'm pretty 
I'm excited to see who you pick. Yeah, I'm gonna uh, in about two weeks. I'll knock it down to my final three, and then we'll have an, uh, the full announcement. Um, will be probably the week like when we preview week one of the Premier League season. I like it. Yeah. So um, yeah, that leads us right into stake your claim. Hey, before we do this, I forgot to give you my home run derby quiz. From earlier. Oh shit! Okay, I yeah. Waited, I waited until now because yeah, I, you I, waited I an hour. <laughs> yeah, I waited a, a really long time. Um, so back, back to the home run derby. <laughs> okay, yeah, easy. Everybody remembers uh, when we talked about that an hour ago. Yes. <laughs> Do you know who the four players that have won multiple home run derbies are? There's only uh, four of them. Ken Griffey. That's how many has he won? I think he's won three. Only one job. Ever. He's the only one. Pl- yeah. yeah, the only player to win three. Uh, Pete. Back to back. Pete Alonzo. Okay. Um. Did Prince Fielder win two? Yeah, you already guessed Prince okay. Fielder. Remember pre-recording? Yeah, before we Prince recorded, Fielder. you said there was a quiz, and I said that one of the answers was Prince Fielder. Yeah. If you get um, this third guy, <laughs> I'm gonna be. It's gonna be pretty cool. Yoenis Cespedes. Damn. Did I really Yo. get that? That was him, yeah. Let's go. Yeah. I knew yeah, he had won he... before, but back to back. Wow. 13 14. Let's go. Was that when he yeah, was with no. the A's? Uh I don't know. I think it was. I think it was too. Yeah. Yeah, Prince Fielder, Jonas Cespedes, Pete Alonso, and Ken Griffey, the only me. four players. Didn't even take an no. extra guess. No. Got them all. Uh, and yes, both of those were with Oakland. Okay. Gotcha. So, uh, stake or claim? Are you yeah. going to nah. start it off or you want me to you start it, it off? You got it. You got it. All right. So, um, it's no secret that Garrett Cole is uh, finally acting like Garrett Cole in the pinstripes, which is making me so happy. But I have a, I have a very bold claim to make, though, Grayson. Okay. Not only will he win the Cy Young this year, I think he's going to win it two more times by the time his career's over, and he'll end his career with three because he hasn't won one yet. Okay. I think he's been like what, like top three. Like four, three or four times in his career, but he's never won one. It think, sounds uh, sounds right. I think this season's the one. Yeah, he was top four in 2015 in Pittsburgh. Top five 2018. Number two in 2019. Number four in 2020. Number two in 21, and then number nine last year. Yes, I mean he's been there. Yeah. It's just, uh, I think I think he'll end up with three by the time his career's over, though. Okay. Yeah, uh, age thirty-two already though. That's it's it's not like it hasn't been done. Scherzer can do it. It's true. Verlander can do it. That's that's fair. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, what's honestly like? What's what's your likelihood of that? You're a baseball guy. Three is Dang. tough. I think two is much more likely. Okay. Um. Yeah, three would be hard, especially like considering he didn't get one within like his first, unless he wins it this year. He hasn't gotten one in his first 10 years. Yeah, that's true. So we'd have to see, like, um, not that he has to get much better, but more that the field has to get a little worse. Which may not ever happen. Yeah, that's the <laughs> hard part. Weird, weird period of baseball. And I, and I know you know this more than me because you're way more of a baseball fan, but, like, the talent all across the board. Like, when you yeah. and I were talking last night, you're exactly right. Every every team has good players, unless you're the Oakland A's. I mean, Britt Rutgers okay, but like, or the Nationals, but like, just not not only just like the abundance of talent everywhere, but also like you know the guys that um, don't look like they can hit for power, but actually can, and the dudes that are tall but can steal bases. It's just like just such a crazy time, dude. Yeah, uh, what I said verbatim last night was that we're in the golden age of talent in baseball. I don't know if this is like the golden age of baseball, particularly, but I think talent wise, like watching players across the board, this is the time. Like we're seeing guys like we have never seen before. Guys like Shohei Otani, shit, uh, Ellie De La Cruz. Like guys like this are do things that are unprecedented week by week. We're seeing records broken all the time. 
and guys yeah. joining just such elite classes of players in statistical categories and just things they can do. And, and like, I've, we've never seen it like this. And I think for you and I especially, it's also a combination of the the new guys, but also mixed with the the older guys that are, you know, like still very good. And, yeah. and some of them are now even like in their, like very much in their prime, more so than they were when they were younger. Yeah. So it's just, it's a cool mix. Yeah, it is. Um, I'll go ahead and hit my stake your claim. I think the Dodgers are going to make a couple of moves after this All-Star break kind of at the deadline, before the deadline. Uh, and they're going to win the West by probably six or seven games. Oh, wow. Yeah, I, I think that they're going to make um, a big infield pickup to to put it second base. Um, I think that's kind of the the play. A um, couple of guys you could look at. Like if the Angels fall out of contention, I could see them trading for like a Brandon Drury. Um there's a few teams that, you know, have like some decent middle infielders I could see them trading for. Okay. And then um they might go after pitching, but it just seems like they need a little bit more at the bottom of the lineup just to kind of juice it up. Okay. I like that take. Yeah. And, and oh, I think no, I mean, like- at the same time, I also think for Arizona, like they're gonna slow down a little bit. Like they already kind of have. They're gonna slow down a little bit in the second half just because of kind of faulty pitching outside of Zach Gallon, and that's going to kind of be their downfall in winning this division. I was literally just about to ask you what you thought was going to happen to Arizona. Yeah. I mean, what about the Giants? Do you think the Giants will finish second? I don't know. I just don't think the Giants have the the firepower. Not the, even to finish second? No. Uh, I think Arizona's okay. going to be better than San Francisco for the rest of the year, essentially. Um yeah. I just think that San Fran, like, yeah, they have some good pitching. They've got a couple of good starters. They've got a fantastic closer. Uh, they don't have the bats that I look for in a team to, like, finish so well in, a, like, a pretty good division. Yeah. So, you know, we'll have to see. Okay. I like that take, though. Yeah. All right. Well, we kept it just about at two hours. Solid one. Solid stuff. Yeah, that was a big fan of that one. That that one was very entertaining to record. It sure I, I was. And I hope you guys enjoyed listening. And if you did, or even if you didn't, if you didn't enjoy listening, go and comment, leave a hate comment on our most recent Instagram post. <laughs> yeah, I mean, seriously, trash yeah. us. Yeah. Tell us, how we were, how, tell us how wrong we were. Yeah, drag us through the mud on our most recent Instagram post. Or tell us how good we did whether publicly or privately, because there's plenty of ways that you can express how much you enjoyed listening to this episode, like following us on Instagram, following us on TikTok, following us on Twitter even. I kind of want to get the Twitter going. I'm a Twitter guy. It's just hard to get it going when I got nobody seeing the tweets. Um, Join the subreddit, r slash second to nd and short. That simple. Type it in. Join the subreddit. Um... And then, of course, the most instant way to show feedback is while you're listening on Apple Music or Apple Podcasts or Spotify as well, go leave a five-star review. Let let Spotify and Apple know that you enjoy this podcast. Please. And, um, yeah, just keep listening. We, we really appreciate it. The numbers look good. We, uh, you know, I'm going to be open about that kind of stuff. That's that's what I'm going to try and do with you people that are listening. I'm going to be open with you guys about how everything is going on our end. And it's going great. We're putting out great clips, great graphics, things like that. Um, we're really enjoying ourselves. And, um, yeah, we're just going to we're gonna keep it up. We're going to keep giving you all the content that you guys want and um, what, we, uh, what we enjoy doing. So, with that being said... We'll catch y'all. Well, I'll catch y'all later this week. Luke will be at the beach because he likes to go on vacations. And uh, he'll catch y'all next week. But, um, yeah, that's going to do it. Peace. Peace.